Warning, you are about to enter the BGP suite. No thongs, no boy shorts, no thigh highs, no commandos are permissible. BGP, big girl panties only. So pull up to woman up. And no, please don't leave with your panties in a bunch. Hello, it is a beautiful day in Southern California. We are in the heart of Lamert Park, so you know it's already lit, right? The current temperature is 66 degrees, and we plan on making it even hotter. I am Mona Lachey, along with Nisha Nini Williams and a Michelle Arthur A. Michelle. <laughs> she got so many damn I got names. A long uh, Adrian A. Green. <laughs> that girl, that girl over there. Okay, we are BGP and welcome to Big Girl Panties. This topic is part two for Love Them or Leave Them. In our previous broadcast, we talked about uh, the term or the definition for hit it or quit it, the booty call, and also the homie lover friend scenario. I just want to add one more thing to the hit it or quit it type of scenario. This type of man is a man that thinks that putting notches on his belt, i.e. women, Mm -hmm. is what makes him a man. Mm -hmm. And I just want you guys to be very um, cautious of that man. He's going to come in fast. He's going to have all the right things to say. He's going to be very attentive. He's going to be calling you all day and texting you all day because he has one objective, and that objective is to smash you. So be very cautious of that man. He's going to say, you know, I've dreamed about this this day, and I've dreamed about this situation, Mm -hmm. and I want to be with you, and he's really up to no good. Here's the thing. A man that has something to lose, a man that um, has a future, he's not going to want to smash you so quickly he's want he's going to want to get the chance to get to know you Mm -hmm. so the next situation that we have for you is what would you call the casual relationship casual would be just that it's nothing real serious um it's just very laid back there's no real uh commitment Mm -hmm. but it's um you know we go out we hang out we have a good time that's what i would consider casual nothing real serious maybe it's not even you're not even looking for it to go too much further than just a casual relationship it's just some one of those things um you know just to have fun and hang out yeah is sex involved? Why are you asking? Like, like, is, know, is sex I'm, I'm involved kinda, in this casual relationship? I think it can be in some circumstances. I wouldn't recommend it um, because oftentimes sex just takes things to a whole different level um, for women especially because we are so emotionally connected when it comes to sex. So if you are a big girl and you got your big girl panties on, you might can handle a casual relationship that involves sex because you know how to turn it on and turn it off, just like we talked in the last segment. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Nisha? A casual relationship is like a a, a, a situation with no labels for me. Mm. Like there's no labels. There's no, you, you still technically can, ex, you know, ex, explore your options. You spend time with each other. You may even like the person, but you guys are still not official. Mm. It's just casual. It's the let's just go with the flow. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Okay. You know, one day at a time. One day at a time and see what happens. (laughs) Let's just get to know. Let's just get to know each other. You know, that's that's what a casual relationship is to me. Absolutely. Would sex be involved for in your definition? It shouldn't, but Mm -hmm. it does a lot of times, and that's where it leads to a situation ship or a buddy. Like that, buddy. Mm. <laughs> you said you like that. I like that, buddy. Um, flag on the plane. <laughs> flag 
on the play. <laughs> it's this song by Music Soul Child called Buddy. I love the way he describes being Girl, a buddy. Yeah, oh, yeah, they can love. get you with some words. Okay, okay. <laughs> Casual relationship is exactly what it is. Yeah. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take, take anything away. away. Mm. Two people like each other. They do things together. He might buy you gifts. He might take you out to movies. Might go on trips. You might go on trips yep. together. But like you say, there is no label mm -hmm. on it. He is not your man. You are not his woman. Mm -hmm. um, we just enjoy each other's company, company more often than outside people. Right. Mm -hmm. And and basically, a lot of women are in casual relationships, yep. thinking that they are in monogamous relationships. Mm -hmm. So that goes to our next scenario. How does one know when they are in a monogamous relationship? Are you asking me? Yes. Oh, when you guys have that conversation. When you have that conversation and you get the clarity and expectations on both sides of what you want and where you guys are going together, um, that's when you know you're in a monogamous relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that communication has to be there. It has to be said. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. You make it known. Okay, are we in a monogamous relationship or not? I think it's so important too because if we're if we're being sexual, um, you know, we need to know: is this just me and you, or is, are you out there hitting other women? What's going on? So I think yeah, the communication has to be there, and, it's, and it needs to be made very clear. If we are, if we are not. I would say in all the scenarios that we talked about, even in part one, hit it and quit it, the mm -hmm. booty call, homie, lover, friend, wrap it up. Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, you can do anything you want to, be anything you want to, be in all these situations, but at the end of the day, use protection. Casual relationships, yeah, that there's sex in, involved. Mm -hmm. Monogamy. Mm. Do you remember when you were little <laughs> and a little boy ran up to you and had, he had this note and it was all folded up oh. and you were with your friends and he handed you a note and he ran off and you opened the note and it said, would you go with me? Check yes or no, note. check the box. <laughs> yes. And so if your girl said there was he was cute, then you said he was cute and then you checked the box, yes. Mm -hmm. But what's really funny about it, because I was thinking about it the other day, okay, we checked the box and said, yes, we would be his girlfriend, where's the box that he checked that said that he was going to be our mm -hmm. boyfriend? Right. So, <laughs> right. So like you say, it has to be a mutual yep. verbal agreement yes. that we both say it's me and you against the world. Yeah. Nothing comes between us. Mm -hmm. And like you say, we sit at this table. Mm -hmm. Hmm, should we talk about the table? Yeah. <laughs> and we start no, negotiating on how we want this relationship to be. And uh, most of the times your monogamous relationships are your most long-lasting relationships. That, that should be one of your mm -hmm. uh, long-lasting relationships before you enter into marriage. Because like I said, some men want to have a moment with you. They want to have experiences with you. They want to put you in situations. And this would actually be a relationship that you know all things don't don't last mm -hmm. long you know true, that true. two people really put a hundred percent in trying to see mm -hmm. if they were compatible enough and suitable enough to go to the next step which would be marriage right, right. oftentimes though you do see where guys will say that um you'll think you're in a monogamous relationship and then they'll later say well I never said that or I never made that clear. So that's why when you say making it very clear is so important because yeah. later on it'll come up, uh, no, you ain't my woman or you, you know what I mean? See, and that's, that's the thing though, because, and I literally just got through with a book, um, or a woman was discussing that when she was giving her situation. Technically we should be not giving our bodies to someone until you have that conversation on where you are in the relationship. Mm -hmm. If it's just casual, if you're just a situation, you shouldn't even be having sex because sex confuse sex can confuse things. Oh, yeah. Sex can have a guy actually liking you mm -hmm. but still not committed to you. True. He can be like, I like her. I enjoy the sex. I enjoy the moments. Hell, I may even enjoy her conversations, but no, nah, I'm still single. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go on over there and talk to Mona. Exactly. Because I'm still single. Exactly. Even though 
yeah I enjoy our time together right so right. technically you should be before you even do that you should kind of put yourself in a place where you like all right I want to be monogamous with you here's my expectations this is what I want mm -hmm. what are you looking for see if he's on that same page and then be like now I'm willing to you know, mm -hmm. explore a sexual relations, a relationship with you as well. Right. Because if not, then we fall into those different categories that have been talked about already. Mm -hmm. And True. sex can confuse things. Yeah. And, so, yeah. and what I'm finding a lot of guys say now is that, you know, really, men were not supposed to just be with one woman. Yeah. At this 50 plus age, yeah. That is a lot of guys' mentality about a monogamous relationship. Well, it's not necessarily a uh, mentality. It, it is absolutely correct that mm -hmm. it's, it's only been, I, I don't know, 50 or 60 years that uh, monogamy uh, was really a thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe 100 years. I don't know. I'm not a, yeah, a stat person. We, we, yeah. I'm not a stat person. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> monogamy... Um, it's not a, a thing that men subscribe to, you know. When you think about their genitals, they swing in the wind. We're the ones that's fixed, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like you know that. Me. Okay, swings in the wind. Okay. Yeah, they go from so there. So you go here, they're you know, yeah. yeah. And we over here like, hey, <laughs> what about you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, to cut down on the complications, you, you do have to be clear because, like you said, You've been going with this man 10 years, and he'll be like, I can never say we know okay. Man. I just enjoy being in your company. Exactly. And see, I don't have no money for no boxes, mm -hmm. so don't go to killing people. But, yeah, okay. mm. technically, like Nisha said, we should not be having sex until we get married. We should be virgins until we get married. However, I am not the relationship police. I cannot tell you what to do. You're going to put on your big girl panties and you're going to put yourself in a situation and you're going to be responsible for that situation. If you want to do what you want to do in this era, my body, my choice. My P, my whatever. <laughs> hey, be responsible. What right. you cannot do is uh, accept being a hit it or quit it, right. being a booty call, being go. a homie lover friend, being in a casual relationship, and then crying victim. That's mm -hmm. what you signed up for. Mm -hmm. Right. You sign up, you play with it. Uh, women are always supposed to come with love. I come with love and I have the opportunity to recall my love at any time. Mm -hmm. So know what you can handle as a woman. And if you do not want to be a booty call, you're going to sign up for booty call. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is Good that's point. Yeah. One of my um, ex-friends, she used to get mad at me because she said, I was never going to get a man because I would be like Nisha. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a man that's looking for his woman that's eventually looking for his wife. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do with me? What do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want to hit it and quit it? Mm -hmm. Hey, because I might have that mindset today. Right. I'm a grown woman. Mm -hmm. Right. See, I'm 60 years old. I'm not going to be a born-again virgin. Mm -hmm. I, whatever reputation I have right now, that's it my is reputation. It, it right. is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I got my big girl panties. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can play the role right. to the T. Exactly. So what do you want to do with me? Mm -hmm. What do you want from me? And I might Straight be up. in the mood right now to entertain you with right. that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I have the right to say, I'm going to take my ball home and I don't want to play anymore. Exactly. Yep. True that. Point blank period. Yes. Like a booty car. Yeah. A booty car can go on for years and years and years and mm, years. Facts. And one day you'll be like, I'm tired. I don't want to do working. that. I don't anymore. want this no more. Right. And it yeah. should be no harm, no foul. Exactly. When you see that brother on the streets, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Type, that's different from a hit or quit. Right. Yeah. You know yeah, what right, I'm saying? Right. So just depending on what position you want to be in. So society says women have a biological clock. Society says a woman has a market value where her body and her mind is most uh, susceptible to getting a high quality man. We have a window of opportunity oh, and that window is about seven years. So between 21 and 28 is what society says will be the most successful time for you to be married and be provided and protected for. Wow. Yes. Mm. Society or a certain community? 
Just so I want to be I clear. would say society because society sets the rules and regulations and put them out there. And then the people decide, yes, we're going to follow that formula. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So, and that was again 21 to 28. Yes, is your prime peak market value. Well, I mean, that is your, your, your 20s as is woman. your prime. Right. That's when everything is yeah. bow, boom, yeah. Bow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. not so heartbroken, tainted by, you know, failed relationships. Men want to coach you so you're coachable. You don't have an attitude problem. Oh. You're not set in your own ways because you're 60 like Mona Lachey. And I'm like, nah. Uh-huh. You're right. I'm right. not going to be able to do that. <laughs> right. I see. Mm, you're not the boss of me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. okay. So, what is, since you are our resident married woman, <laughs> what is your definition mm-hmm. of marriage? My definition of marriage, oh my gosh. I would have to say the first thing came to my head when you said that was my mother and father. And I've always liked the fact that there was, um, I never witnessed confusion. They discussed everything, financially, everything. Um, I think marriage is something where we have agreed, number one, we're compatible. We're evenly yoked. We have the same uh, ideas and, well, not necessarily ideas, but same goals. We want the same thing out of life and we work really, really hard to make those things a reality. Like we both hustle and grind and do our thing to make sure we raise our children properly and do all these things together. I seek his advice. He seeks mine. Together we come together and just make this thing blossom into something huge. That's my definition. Um, Never got that. In the in the marriages I've Green experienced, Miss <laughs> <laughs> Nisha Williams. Um, if I were to base it on my parents, I would say a marriage is a written, spiritual, and verbal agreement between two people mm. to spend the rest of their lives together. They evolve together. They grow together. They may even start on the same path, but that path hits a, like a brick in the road. You hit that fork in the road, but they still figure out a way to mm. make it work. Yes. Um, of course, your re- kids may come into play because some people don't want kids. Mm-hmm. Um, businesses may come into play. Health situations may come into play. But no matter what is thrown their way, they have agreed verbally and in writing as well spiritually to stick it out no matter what happens yeah. for the rest of their lives. Yeah. That's what a marriage is to me. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mona. <laughs> <laughs> marriage to me is a business. It is. Marriage mm-hmm. is a legal and binding contract. contract where two people say that we are going to open this business. I am a CEE. You are the CEO. We are going to have to decide if we want to be bankrupt in this business, if we want to have a grand opening and a grand closing, and if we want to be poor in the business or rich. Right. It's a business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's two people, two mature people getting together to create a legacy and a bond that you do in front of friends, family, enemies, whoever you say your God is, Mm -hmm. and that pastor. You are saying for uh, rich or poor and sickness and health, Mm -hmm. for better and worse, I mean, for better or worse, you can tell I ain't never Man. (laughs) (laughs) For better or worse, the devil do us part. There's a lot of things that is going to happen that you just can't. When you're in a monogamous relationship, you can be like, I quit. Right. I'm done. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in a marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think marriage is something, and I, I do, I take marriage very, very seriously. I think it's not something that you should play with. Mess around and propose to Mona Lachey. Get on your knees with a nice ring and she accept. You're done. (laughs) It's going to be to death do us part. I do not play with the sanctity of marriage. There are things that's going to happen, and you have to go through it. You can't just be in it for the good part. You got to work that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, we we create legacies, and and that's the time where, you know, Nisha said earlier about she says what her expectations are. We're going to talk about this table. 
when a man asks you what you bring to the table, mm-hmm. what is your definition, Miss Nisha Williams? To the table? When or... a man asks you, what is your answer? Oh. When a man asks you, what do you bring to the table? What do I bring to the table? My sarcasm, <laughs> my body, my no I'm just kidding. Um, oh, that's a good question. I would say I bring my. I hate to throw. I don't want to throw the resume out there because I think the resume is like that's a separate situation, right? But I would say I I would be that person. I would be what it is that you need. So let's say. Cause I hate using this, I hate using this term. Let's say he's a high value man, right? <laughs> and he already has the financial backing, so he doesn't need your money. He already he he doesn't need you to cook for him because he has a chef. He doesn't need your vehicles because he has multiple vehicles. So I would my role would be whatever it is that you feel you need for me. That's mm. what I would bring to the table for that particular person. But if he's like, now what's your background? You know, then that's where my college can come into play. Then that's where my investments can come into play. Then that's where, like, you know, my I can assist with whatever it is in business would come into play. But as far as that, that would be kind of like down the wayside. It's it's what it what is it that you're looking for? I I may be able to play my position mm-hmm. if that's what you're looking for. Mm. So that would be my response to what do you bring to the table? Oh, okay. So mine's would be I think I'm, I'm well I think. I'm a team player. I want to work together cohesively to 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 uh, grow. Um, I want to build an empire, and whatever it is that he's into, I want us to both be supportive of one another. And I think me bring, coming to the table with um, my, even though some of the things I've been through have been negative, I think I've learned so much from that that I I bring to the table a sense of um, communication skills, um, just hard work and supportive. You know, I'm very supportive. Um, would you say compassion? Like, yeah, compassion. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Those are the areas. Loyalty. Exactly. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for the help. (laughs) I'm loyal. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that would be my answer. What do you bring to the table? First of all, what happened? Uh oh. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> First of all, I would like to say something to all the young ladies that are listening right now. You do not, do not, do not answer the question of what do you bring to the table to random dudes that you are never going to have a relationship with or you're ever going to talk to. What you're going to have to understand is that these people out here, they have their own perceptions of what their table is. So when a man asks me what I bring to the table, first of all, I need to know what type of table is it. Is it a round table? Is it a square table? Is it seat four? Does it seat eight? Does it have an insert that you can pull out and add more chairs to it? What is this table decorated with? How many people have actually been at this table? Mm. My answer for you is what do you need me to bring to the table? This is the problem with people in their relationships. We don't sit down and hash out a personal blueprint between men and women that fit us exclusively. Mm -hmm. We want the song that we heard. The novel that we read, the article of love that made us all tingly and fuzzy (laughs) inside. We are not personal with our mates. What do you need from me as a woman? It's your table. You've already established certain things that are at this table. What centerpiece can I add to the table? Mm -hmm. What extra decorations do you need from me as a woman with my womanly touch? That's my answer. I'm not going to answer that for anybody because I need to know how expensive is your table? Do you have goals, dreams, hopes, aspirations, desires, and plans for yourself that you have not only talked about, but you are walking in it? Mm -hmm. 
We are talking about marriage. Right. You are talking about a table. How expensive is your table? What kind of things have you done to sustain yourself that will let me know that you can sustain me? We right. have to be able to sit at the table and he'd be like, so, uh, Mona, I need you to cook breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, and dinner seven days a week. And I might have to be like, um, nah, I'm not going to be able to do that. How about I cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner five days a week and you give me weekends off? And he might come back and be like, nah, I'm going to really need blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, how about we... Whoever comes home first gets the dinner mm. started. Are we, you know, and we sit and we hash it out back and forth, and then we come to a mutual agreement. Okay, this is how we're going to handle dinner, and then we stick to the plan. He comes back and he's like, mm, Mona, girl, I'm gonna need some head seven days a week, three times a day. I'm like, Ah, Mike can give you head every day, <laughs> one day a week, you know, seven days, and we sit back. And we negotiated mm -hmm. because here's the thing. Compromise. Don't play with people. Exactly. And, and talking about sex. If you know you don't like fellatio, don't drop that man right now. Exactly. If you like, no, you don't like giving fellatio, drop that man right now. Because sex, a man know when you're not um, feeling him. Mm -hmm. You know when he ain't feeling you. Mm -hmm. We just doing our chores, you know. Mm. When you cook a meal, he know when you put your love, love into it. that. Yes. Or you just took a can of soup and added some noodles. He knows that. So <laughs> marriage is something that, like I said, you bring love and he brings love. And we're just trying to love and on each other more. And we, yes. we're we on the same page. We're trying to get to the same place. We may not do it the same way. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to get to one place. So you have to be able to sit down and hash all this stuff out. Okay, he's going to pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. You're going to be responsible for the little bills or however it works out for you. Mm -hmm. We want to say all of this stuff is supposed to be set into stone. Some people can't do it like that. Mm -hmm. What society says that they should do. Mm -hmm. you know. But for two people to get together and be honest and genuine and trustworthy with one another's time, resources, spirituality, and bodies. Mm -hmm. It's a business. Mm -hmm. I okay. represent you on these streets just like you want me to represent you True. out on these streets. If you yes. raggedy out on these damn streets, guess what? I'm raggedy with you because I'm associated yeah, to you. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what marriage is. And marriage is 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 also uh, deciding if you're going to have children mm -hmm. and sitting and talking about how you're going to raise those children. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in spanking? Do you not believe in spanking? If you don't believe in spanking, then you don't need to be with that man. Because you guys are going to always bump heads in that area. See, we get into mm -hmm. situations and we think we can change somebody. Mm. Or if we do better, oh. then they'll do better. Oh, yes. hell no. no. See that person for who he is right now. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, you could be a size two. You could be all natural. You could have no tattoos. You can cook, clean, do it upside down, hanging from a chandelier. But if that man does not desire... To be a husband right now, at this moment, guess who ass ain't walking down the aisle? You. Mm -hmm. So you have to know what you want Yep. and stick to it. Your hormones going to kick in a little bit. But if it's your desire to get married, you can't be fooling around. Mm -hmm. And if we have this market uh, sexual value thing that they say we have, and it it is true for some, you know, there are women that get in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and get married for the first time. But mm -hmm. you should be wanting to not gamble with your life and gamble with your future. So I don't really have anything else to say. Ladies, do you have a final thought? Hmm. I just want to say that, um, uh, like you said, when you come to the table, make sure you have these open discussions before marriage because it is so important. You don't want to get into something that you later have to, you know, that you, you realize you didn't discuss that thing. Put it all out there on the table initially so that you can have a successful marriage. And you know what? Not to interrupt you, but isn't that how you come up with, didn't you see the warning signs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he change on you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, really? 
he didn't change on you or she didn't mm. change on you, you never knew the person. You yes. never paid attention. You yes. never dug that deep. Yes. You just thought because you were visually attracted to him and that you started it. romanticizing and fantasizing, you became physically attracted to him without even knowing if the sex was going to be bomb. Mm-hmm. All these extra things that we do, especially as women, and then we was like, who are you? Mm-hmm. He was never that person. It was somebody yeah. that you fantasize about. So, yeah, be in reality. Yeah, yeah. Marriage is something you got to dig deep. Right. Dig deep. I mean, like six right. feet down into all of that stuff so that you know what you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. Good. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Good point, though. <laughs> um, I would just say it, it goes back to what I always say. Communication is key. Mm-hmm. Um, express your needs and wants and desires and expectations with a person that you want to be serious with and be open to hearing what it is that they're expecting of you as well. Um, Get the message to be crystal clear as far as what you want so that you're not confused or wasting time or dragging the years by, by sitting there just hoping and praying that things go (laughs) work out the way you want them to. Um, If you do want a situationship or a casual relationship, be prepared to wear your big girl panties and accept the consequences for those actions. If you're looking for marriage, um, make sure that you are on the path or of marriage or a partnership with someone that is also on that same page so that you're not wasting time as well. Um, if you are dating someone who doesn't know what they want because there are some people that just don't know or they're not open to it. They're just not ready. Be open to accepting that answer for someone. And the only way you would know is by literally having a conversation. Don't be afraid to discuss anything with someone that you're getting to know, and especially before sex is involved because sex to me should be the last thing on the table before you even you know do that. Like you should really get to know someone before you throw your body into the equation um, cause that, that would alleviate a lot of situations, a lot of red flags, a lot of missed communications or, or missed opportunities or wasted time. Um, and that's all I would have to say. I think that we, call ourselves grown mm-hmm. and then we don't want to act grown. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I am not the relationship police. It takes, it takes a certain type of woman to uh, get herself into different scenarios and different situations. There's levels to this. Like I said, you know, know your role. Don't mm-hmm. add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away. Nobody is actually your man until you are married. And sometimes that gets a little tricky, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> one thing that I want young ladies to understand is that we are women. Society says that we are supposed to act a certain way. Society says that we are supposed to choose and have certain choices in life. The one thing that I want you to take away from this broadcast is that the word is reputation. Mm. Your reputation as a woman in these streets are priceless. Here's the thing. Nisha could have done everything right for 20 years. Adrian could have, everybody could have been giving her accolades for 10, 20, 30 years. And both of these young ladies do one thing wrong. And you become that one thing. Mm. Sometimes for the rest of your life. Mm. Sometimes you can't pull that back. So, be grown. Be woman. Nobody can tell you what makes you happy at the end of the day. Make the choices that you need for your life. Mm -hmm. Be responsible. But remember, you do have a reputation. If you desire to be married, settle for nothing less. If you can handle all Mm -hmm. these other situations, because it takes a cold woman to do some of these booty calls and hit it and quit it or casual relationships, hey, own it. Own your mess. Handle your business. But remember, some things you can't take back. People are petty. They will remember you for that one bad choice that you made, and it may cause you from getting the things that your heart desire, your heart desires. We are BGP. (laughs) I don't have anything else to say. Thank you to our current subscribers. If you are new to our channel, 
please give us a non-monetary gift of pushing that subscribe button. Hit like so everybody knows that you enjoy our broadcast and that draws a little more interest to our channel. Push that notification bell so that you'll know when we upload a new video. We ask that if you would like to contribute to our penny jar, put a little paper in the jar, a couple of pennies in the jar. Mm -hmm. That information is located in the description box. And if it's not too much trouble, we would ask that you share these videos with your daughters, with your wives, with your nieces. Uh, have them give us some feedback. Tell us if we're doing good, what we should have included, which we should not have talked about. We uh, don't wear our hearts on our sleeves. We are looking to bring you the best information possible. We're not looking for you to love us or like us. We are looking for you to love yourself better. There's a lot of things that you should have known way before you became an adult. And we're just trying to be the vehicle that fills those gaps. We are BGP. And to, until mm -hmm. the next episode, we're out of here. Bye. <laughs>